the heart of your system. Perfection redesigned is I guess one way to put it. Built from the ground up, the Magnitude by EK have combined the ultimate performance, design and personalization in the one complete package. Offering endless customization, Magnitude will no doubt have an option for your build theme, whether it's full nickel, all black, blue or red, just to name a few. Starting with some basics, Magnitude comes in three specific blocks for Intel 1150X, Intel 20XX and AMD AM4 with each available in four finishes. Copper plus acetyl, nickel plus acetyl, nickel plus plexi and of course full nickel. But Magnitude doesn't stop there. EK offer a range of customized parts from seven different accent colors that follow the Quantum Talk lineup additional digital RGB accents to upgrade acetyl or full nickel variants for that RGB bling. And lastly, flat cold plates will be available for those who take their CPUs to the next level and like to customize their IHS. Taking a look at the exploded block view, we really see just how many parts make up the magnitude. As EK are pushing users to dismantle this block for customizing, they have a few fail safe measures to ensure proper assembling is made. Both the top, frame and cold plate all incorporate rectangular holes so they can only be rotated and installed 180 degrees, basically preventing the fin array going the wrong way. The insert is also keyed, allowing it to be installed correctly as well. I'll start at the bottom and work my way up the block covering really the main parts. First off is the cold plate, which is machined from copper and EK state this is their first production cold plate with the lathe turned base. In short, this technique allows the curvature to be matched precisely with the IHS. Two different cold plates and one flat cold plate are available as an accessory with each one providing a small mark to differentiate the shape which corresponds to the frame. Next up is the jet plate and we find two designs which come in multiple thicknesses of stainless steel for a total of five variations. These include 0.5p and 0.6p and also 0.5c, 0.6c and 0.7c. 20XX and AM4 blocks come with P parallel jet plates that help even flow distribution whereas 1150X are supplied with C curvature jet plates that help increase flow velocity in the center for that smaller die. Each block is supplied with two thicknesses so that if the CPU is exceptionally concave, the curvature of the cold plate can be exaggerated by 0.1 millimeters. Only 0.5 millimeter thickness jet plate should be used with the flat cold plate. We now find a jet plate o-ring and together with the inlet o-ring ensures that all coolant passing through the block is directed under the jet plate and through the fin array. At the center is the insert and quite different from what we're used to seeing. On all magnitude models, this is made from solid brass and is essential to apply pressure to the cold plate and IHS correctly. AM4 versions receive an asymmetrical design allowing the dies to be directly targeted with peak coolant velocity. All versions have specific contact to apply pressure where it counts. All are finished with nickel plating except for the copper plus acetyl blocks. The last o-ring and yes there are three o-rings all up in the block made from high quality EPDM synthetic rubber. The main o-ring retains its shape making reassembling a breeze. Next up is the frame which is made from aluminum and comes in at only 46 grams. Each frame is specific to the chosen socket and is finished in either natural or black anodization. The block's mounting is hidden in the frame's design which gives it that unique look. All digital RGB versions of Magnitude use the same high density LED strip with a total of 30 addressable RGB LEDs. On Plexi versions they illuminate inwards and with opaque tops they illuminate outwards. The LED strip must be inserted through the frame and the wire can exit the block on any of the corners for best cable routing. The accent piece is CNC'd from solid blocks with the standard accents being nickel plated brass or white acetyl for the nickel plus acetyl finish. Several anodized aluminum accents are also available as accessories. They are black, red, blue, purple, gold and green. Lastly we find the top. These are all interchangeable across all current versions of Magnitude. Tops are available in nickel plated brass, plexi and acetyl. Two standard G quarter ports spaced 29mm apart can be found which have the same spacing as all EK Quantum Vector GPU blocks for cleaner tube runs. When it comes to block mounting, Magnitude follows a reverse approach to what we've seen previously. Male standoffs can be found which are inserted to the back plate. The block is then placed over and is positioned by the standoffs ensuring it does not move around on the thermal paste. 
springs are inserted into the frame with the female thread reaching up inside the spring. This allows engagement of the screw before the spring is compressed. Brass screws complete the mounting process and conceal the spring. These are finished in either nickel plating or matte black corresponding with the frame. Now the magnitude blocks aren't replacing the current velocity lineup. These are more a luxury version that'll fit in line with EK's current quantum lineup. Now another area I wanna jump in or deep dive in is I saw on CES quite a few videos on how customizable these blocks are. And I just wanna sort of clear up any confusion that end users may have about how customizable these blocks are. Now, they're customizable to an extent to which socket or CPU you have. As you saw earlier in the video, uh, there are the specific blocks for the Intel X299, Z390, and also the AMD AM4. So in saying that, you can't really have one block fits all in this scenario. Now, EK is stating these are their highest performing CPU blocks uh, to date. And unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to test these yet. I've just received these, and this is part one of my two-part video where I will be doing a second video where I will be testing these blocks. So in saying that, you can't really have one block suits all and have them high performing on all different CPUs. So in saying that, uh, EK have a different, uh, different block for the X299, different block for Z390, which will probably be the same for Z490, and a different block for the AMD AM4. So in saying that, if you were to go with an Intel block and then switch to AMD, you would need uh, one, you'd need the new frame. You would also most likely need the new insert because as you saw, the AM4 insert is slightly different to the Intel's. Uh, you'd need a new back plate for the retention mount and you would most likely need a new jet plate as well. So there's quite a lot of different parts that make up these blocks. So you just can't uh, sort of switch them around onto the different sockets. And I think that is fair enough because these are high-end blocks. They're optimal performing blocks. They're for the highest, utmost enthusiast. And they're not really so, sort of for the everyday Joe who's just going to be doing a basic custom loop and leaving it at that. These are the people who will overclock uh, most likely daily or they want the best from their system or they just want a block that looks really nice and has the ability to change the colors with these inserts as well. Now moving on to some other areas I really did like was the fact that you can now have RGB in say the full acetal or in the full nickel blocks now instead of just the clear plexi you can have them in the other. So in the clear plexi you're familiar with that it shoots inwards and it has that really dispersed washed out RGB look but on the uh, acetal it shoots uh, outwards. So you only get the fine line around the edges and it does look very, very clean and I did like that look. Now, another area with these blocks is EK. I have heard in the wind that they will be having an EK configurator on their website to help you choose all the components for these blocks. Because the last thing you wanna do is kit out a block and then you find out you have the AMD insert for your Intel setup. So that'll be pretty sweet to have those. That'll just help the end users get everything right. Now, lastly, it comes down to price. You've probably all been waiting on this. These are quite expensive, which I think is fair enough. A lot of research, a lot of design has gone into these. I'm not sure how many other blocks are out on the market that have specific blocks for each CPU. Like even the inlets are different, the jet plates are different. There's a lot of details and a lot of parts that have gone into these. So the blocks are ranging from 167 US dollars for the full acetyl, all the way up to uh, around 210 US dollars for the full nickel. The colored accent inserts uh, are about 25 US dollars. And then the flat coal plates, where is it over here? is 33 or 34 US dollars. So yeah, that is uh, quite expensive if you start going with the different colored in, uh, inserts or you go with a uh, another flat coal plate, you will be up to around four or so hundred dollars uh, if you're in Australia for a CPU block, which is a lot. But um, as I said earlier, I'm yet to test these, so I'll be really keen to throw these in a system. I do have a part two video, which I said, I do have a really special build in an EK case that they have been collaborating on with another case company. So I'll throw these blocks in, um, I'll deep dive in and see how these perform. But anyway, that's it for this video. I wanna thank EK for sending all these out to check out. I wanna thank you guys for watching and see you in the next one.